What is going on everybody? Welcome to my new series, Bug Report. So this is something I have been thinking of doing for a really long time. And the original idea was with every Tesla software update, I was going to list all the bugs and keep track of them. But updates are way too frequent and bugs come and go pretty quickly through them. But throughout the updates, uh, some bugs stick around. So with this first episode, I'm really gonna need your help. Comment down below whatever bugs you have experienced. You know, watch the video, see what I talk about. But if I don't mention something that you're noticing, now we're talking software here that can and will be fixed in the future, but maybe it's been sticking around for a while. Let me know, let's keep track of it. I'll do an update to this series, let's say every couple of months or something, and we'll just see if previous bugs have been fixed and if new bugs have popped up and stuff like that. So I have a list here that I wanna take a look at. I have footage of some of these bugs. I do my best to have footage to prove to you that I'm experiencing these bugs. A couple of them have actually been fixed since I started thinking about this series and taking these notes. Uh, so I will talk about those as well because I wanna kinda of celebrate those things that Tesla has fixed. So let's check it out. Before we get into it, I have to say thank you to my newest patrons. We got a lot of snow last night. And we also have a couple new additions to the frunk. First up, we got Ben K. Thank you, Ben. Next up, we got Brayman. Thank you so much to you two. And then honorable mentions go to Draghi, Paul, and Brian. If you didn't know, these are made and designed by Stephanie. And I do keep these in the frunk at all times, although it may not always be this organized. So thank you all so much and welcome to the frunk. Okay, so first up is one that has been bothering me since I bought the car. I've had my car since February 2019, and this bug has been there the whole time I've owned the car. It has never been fixed. It's never went away. When I get home, if I back into my driveway, the auto open for the garage door does not work. When you're backing in, I have a auto garage door set to open as I get home, and you'll see in the top right, Right there. It says right there, home auto open in 50 feet. So it should open as I back up, but you'll see I keep backing up and that number is supposed to change. That number is supposed to go down until it hits zero and then open the garage door. But when you're in reverse, it won't work. So now if I flip the car into drive, you can see it automatically open the garage door. I flip back into reverse and you can see the garage door opening. So I've had that bug pretty much since I got the car, so hopefully that will get fixed if somebody sees this <laughs> and uh, fixes it. Now, I'm showing you footage of this here. I know people are going to say, oh, if it's not close enough, it won't signal the garage, like the garage won't detect the remote and it won't open. No, my car never actually clicks the button, so to say, to open the garage door. You can see from the clip that the little pop-up comes down. My car says, all right, opening the garage door in 50 feet, and then it just sits there. It never does it. And if I put the car into drive, even for a second, then boom, automatically it opens the garage door. I can put it back into reverse. So this is a really strange bug. And same going the other direction. When I leave my house, if I drive out of the driveway, of course I back in. So I just go into drive to leave. It will not auto shut. Same thing. If I drive forward into my garage, it'll auto open. And if I reverse to leave, it will auto close. So I would love to see this bug fixed. It's been around for a long time. Okay, next one isn't exactly a bug, but it's just a complaint I have, and I don't think it should work this way. The charge wand doesn't wake up the car. So I'm not exactly sure this one is a bug, but it is something I think Tesla can fix via software. So when I come out to the car in the morning and the car is asleep, it's been charging all night, and I come to unplug it, nothing happens. This button should wake up the car so that I can unplug it. So what I have to do, do come over here, wake up the car. Now you can see it's awake, easy to unplug. Or if you open the app, you can wake it up that way, but it should be able to be woken up just with that button. So if your car's plugged in in the morning and you go to leave and you click that button, it won't unlock and you can't pull the wand out. Now, what some people will do is they'll touch the door handle. What I usually do is I usually just open the app before I leave and that wakes the car up and then it works. But it's kind of strange. Maybe there is some type of software or hardware limitation that makes it so this button cannot wake up the car. But man, if it's possible, please Tesla, please make this wand 
open the car. So one bug that's actually been fixed that was a huge pain for a long time, I think it started with the 2019.16 updates and it stuck around for a long time, was the backup camera turning black. I just want to mention it because now it's fixed. It does seem to be fixed. Uh, that was a pain because you'd put the car in reverse, the backup camera would turn black, and it would be like that for, I don't know, five seconds or 10 seconds, which doesn't sound that bad, but when you're just sitting there like, okay, I wanna see what I'm doing, it's a really long time. But awesome job, Tesla, that bug is gone. Another bug that has been fixed for me, the emergency lane departure assist was actually going off on my dirt roads all the time. When that feature was first released, uh, I was not going off the road at all, but the car kept trying to correct my steering as if I was going off the road. And so that was annoying, but that didn't last very long. That bug went away really quick. Lane widening is still really annoying when you're on autopilot and a lane opens up, it widens. Your car just kind of wants to center itself in this new big fat lane, which we all know isn't really a lane. Uh, I wish that the car would see that there's still one line there and follow that line. I'm sure this bug will go away eventually, but again, this is one that's been around for a really long time. Another fixed bug from my list, cars dancing on the display. I never really cared too much about this. It didn't bother me all that much, but man, you just would constantly see stuff on Reddit and Tesla motor forums. And I'd get questions in the comments about, oh my gosh, why are the cars dancing? And I guess some people had passengers, you know, that would, would comment on it and say, why are all the cars moving? And it would make them kind of uh, not trust the car. It wouldn't, they wouldn't trust uh, Tesla sensors because it showed all the other cars kind of dancing around. That was really strange to me. Uh, I Again, I never really cared. I didn't think it was a big deal, um, but that one's been fixed uh, and it's been fixed for a while and that's really nice. I am noticing now though that sometimes cars will be backwards on the display. Again, I, who cares? I, I really don't think this is a big deal, but just to mention it, um, sometimes like the car in front of me will look like it's facing me on the display when of course in reality it's not. The last bug I have on my list that's fixed and no longer exists, at least for me, is I had wipers suck. That's what I wrote. <laughs> uh, the automatic wipers used to be bad. I'm having a great time with the new Deep Rain Neural Net. It's been working really extremely well for me. I'm just keeping it on auto and I almost never am actually using the button on the wipers. I did notice if it's really dark, then sometimes I'll have to hit the button. Um, but if there's even a little bit of light, like just some street lights and stuff, uh, the auto wipers are awesome. I'm really enjoying them and they're doing great for me. And then the final one on my list, this is brand new, uh, voice commands are not working all that well. So in my review video of the 2019.40.50 update, my voice commands weren't working pretty much at all. I think I tried maybe 20 of them and, and two times did it ever work. Uh, I might have even tried more than that. Uh, for me now, they actually are working. At least the last time I took a drive, everything worked perfectly, really fast. It was really impressive. I liked it a lot, but I'm still getting a lot of comments on my videos where people are saying that voice commands are not working for them and I don't know why. One of the best guesses I've seen, mostly from you guys down in the comments, is that this is a server side issue. So Tesla servers or whatever servers they're using for this voice recognition are getting a little overwhelmed. There's too much data coming in and they're just being a little laggy. Uh, another theory is that cell connection isn't that good. Of course, you need an internet connection for the car to interpret what you're saying and do something about it. And if you're in a spot with not very good connection, then it's not working. Uh, for me, at least the first time I tried, I was on Wi-Fi, so my connection should have been really good. Um, and then the second time I was just driving randomly when it did work. So I personally don't have an exact reason that this is happening, um, but hopefully this one will get fixed soon. This update just came out, so really not that big of a deal, but it is a currently existing issue. All right, so again, let me know what you're experiencing in your cars. None of these are really game breaking or killing my experience with the car. They're just, you know, little things I notice here and there, and I'm sure they'll get fixed eventually, uh, but these are ones that have been sticking around. So let me know what you think of this new series. I hope you enjoy it. I love documenting all the different things going on with this car. It's always changing and it's easy for us to forget exactly all the new developments we've had and problems that have been resolved. Um, so I thought it might be nice to document that. And as you may know by now, at the end of my videos, I answer a question from you guys. So I think this question is pretty interesting and a lot of people maybe are confused about this. So this is from my latest Tesla challenge. If you haven't watched it, I know it's kind of long. Just go watch it on 2x speed. It's it's actually pretty good. Uh, and I talk about some important stuff at the end. This question may show my ignorance to the neural net learning, but do you think if you did that route again, it would be better? Maybe it learned from you intervening. First of all, I'm glad the question was asked. It doesn't matter how much you do or don't know. Always good to ask questions. I'm always doing the same myself. So if you don't know in that Tesla challenge, my car kind of screwed up and drove over a lane line. Like it went way into the other lane, like without a turn signal, it wasn't supposed to do that. And then it corrected itself. So if I did the route again immediately, it may or may not do a better job 
not because the car learned anything from that experience, but because autopilot is always analyzing its situation on the fly and making its decisions based on what it's seeing at the time. So it may just get a little lucky and make a better decision that next time. Going that far over the lane line isn't something I had ever seen before and it was really surprising to me. Uh, so I assume it would do a better job. But the car itself is not learning as it goes. What it does is it takes all the driving information, whether autopilot is on, whether you intervene, it, it doesn't matter. It's always collecting data and it sends it back to Tesla. Tesla uses that data to train its neural net in-house. And then once Tesla verifies that there aren't any regressions and there are improvements, they will then send that new build out to the entire fleet. So your individual car isn't learning at that time, but it is collecting data for Tesla. So that was a really good question. I hope I answered it well enough. If not, you know, keep asking in the comments and I'll respond to you and I may cover it again in a future video. All right, so thanks for watching this one. Again, let me know any bugs that you have going on and you will see me in the next video.